financial and economic crisis, the euro was in real danger of disappearing. The European Central Bank was making the headlines as it rode in to rescue EU banks, lending them billions of euros. Welcome to Frankfurt and the headquarters of the ECB. It's not only Europe's white knight in a crisis, it's also the biggest bank in Europe, possibly even the world. Let's take a look at how it all began. Even though the very first euros came into circulation on the 1st of January 2002, the European Central Bank itself opened its doors back in June 1998, with its first president, Wim Dausenberg, a former president of the Central Bank of the Netherlands. It was the fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989 that would give a boost to the creation of the European single currency, and so to the ECB. In fact, the bank took over from the European Monetary Institute that was created in 1993 under the Treaty of Maastricht. Today, it's the European Central Bank that's in charge of issuing the euro and managing the eurozone's monetary policy. Between 2003 and 2011, Frenchman Jean-Claude Trichet was at the helm of the European Central Bank, followed today by its current president, Italian Mario Draghi. He should remain in the post until 2019. The ECB is a supranational institution. It's completely independent from member state control in terms of its mandate and its day-to-day -day runnings. But it is accountable. Its president has to attend meetings of Parliament's Economic and Monetary Affairs Committee and he also has to present his annual report at the plenary. It's been a rocky four years for the ECB. It's had to rethink its monetary policy and manage the euro to help the members of the eurozone. Are you confused by all the jargon? Well, let's break it down. Price stability is seen as the big goal of the ECB. Maintaining the price of goods and services helps prevent inflation. The ECB tries to maintain that the rate of inflation is close to or below 2%. Targeting interest rates is a short-term tool. We can see that back in 2008, the cost of borrowing was around 3.5%. Today, that number has dropped to just 0.5%. So what is the point of low interest rates? Well, let's go inside and ask the press officer of the ECB. Hi, nice William. Hi. Well, the ECB is responsible for monetary policy, not for economic policy. The executive uh, body in the, the EU and also in the euro area is uh, the European Commission and uh, have a politically steered uh, by uh, the Council and, and, and the Eurogroup. The main objective of monetary policy is to make sure that one euro buys you as much one year from now as it buys you today, more or less. Who is, in your opinion, Mr. Euro? Who represents the Euro? If someone from the outside world has a question about uh, 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 related to monetary policy, he will call uh, Mr. Draghi. If he has a question about, let's say, the political side of the Euro, he will call Mr. Dijsselbloem, uh, the Dutch uh, finance minister and Eurogroup president. So maybe, yeah, maybe there are two Mr. Euros. Every month, the president of the ECB holds a press conference after a governing council where he sets the interest rate. Let's take a look at what he has to say. Let's follow him. Flanking Mr. Draghi at the press conference is the ECB's vice president, Victor Constancio. He's one of the six members of the ECB's executive board that oversees the day-to-day -day running of the bank. The job is a pretty prestigious one, but currently not a single woman on the board. But there was one till 2011. So no change in interest rates today. Did you know the ECB doesn't have its own vault? A bank without money? How strange. But you can find Draghi's signature on the back of some banknotes. For the ECB to function properly, it needs to maintain its status as a financial watchdog for the Eurozone. And in the future, that's going to take place just over there at the ECB's new and revamped building. But this could get difficult under plans for a banking union. If that ever gets underway, could the ECB really control all of Europe's banks? Well, that's another story.